Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, I know we have done follow cameras before, but we're going to take it a step further and we're going to make a boundary for our following camera. So right now the boundary is this purple box. I can move around this purple box and once my character goes outside this purple box, you can see that the camera is moving left, right, and also up and down. So this is what we're going to be creating. So let's roll the intro and let's get right into it. So I have my project here in front of me. I'm gonna load it up. And this project is one that we're gonna be using for our top-down shooter series. So in here, we have some basic camera follow movement. And I've done this video before and I can post it in the, in the video here. Uh, but when I move left and right, you can see that the viewport is basically just following our character here and also up and down. So we wanna add a boundary box to this character. So when they move left and right, the camera itself isn't actually moving. So to do this and make it simpler, we're going to use another object instead of putting everything inside our camera object. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make a new sprite. So I'm gonna name this sprite SPR camera and boundary. And I'm also gonna keep it as 64 pixels. So I'll just edit the image and I'm gonna choose this purple color and make the alpha. 64 and then just fill in the square so once we have the square filled in i want to point out that my origin is in the center at 32 by 32 which is half of 64. so with the sprite in there the next thing we need to do is set up a new object and let's name this object object uh, camera boundary and let's set the sprite to that purple sprite that we had now, the only thing I want to do is go to variable definitions. And so our camera has to follow something, but then our boundary also has to have something to test against. And in this scenario, we're going to be testing against our player, but I'm going to make a new variable definition and I'm just going to name it target. Make sure that we accept an asset. I'll set the default to none. Click on this gear and make sure that we can only select objects when we're looking for something. Okay, so that means that within our room, if we go to our camera object and we double click, double click I said, and we come to the variables, right now our camera is following our character. What we want it to do is we are going to say, look for the boundary camera object. Now that we have that, let's drag our object in and I'm gonna put it right here on my character, zoom in with my mouse, and I'm gonna make this pretty big to start out with and we can fool around with this later on. So if I could drag it out, we'll have it something like that. Okay, so our camera now is set up to follow our boundary, but our boundary needs to be set up to test against the character itself. Okay, so if I were to hit F5, nothing's really gonna change, except our camera's not gonna move and our character can walk outside of this boundary here. So what we wanna do is go back to our workspace, and in the camera boundary, we're going to add a new event. We'll add a step event. Now, this is pretty simple. What we need to do is we need to make sure that we first have a target. So our target can't equal no one. And if we have a target, then what we need to do is we need to make sure that this character or our target here, uh, once our target goes beyond the right hand side of this box, we need to move the box to the right. So that's what we're going to be doing inside this step event. How we can do this is we can use what's called B box left or B box right, bottom and top. So B box stands for the boundary box of our object. So when I place this in the room and I started dragging this out, when I drag it out, this is the B box right. So wherever this ends, this is the pixel or the X coordinate of the B box right. So now that we know that information, we can easily say once the character is past the B box right, then we want to move the target over to the right. The amount that we want to move our boundary box is going to be determined on how fast our character is moving. Now, if I double click our character, you can see that we are using the horizontal movement and down here we are using vertical movement. So we've taken the platformer code and we've just applied it to a top down kind of view. So we're not checking for really anything. We're just letting our character move up, down, left and right based on what key they pressed. And if you need this code, I can paste it in for you. So you won't have to worry about that. 
And I'm going to open up our boundary box here again. So we're going to make sure that we currently have a target. And to do this check, all we have to say is if our target's X position is bigger than B box right, then, well, what do we want to do? We want to move the boundary box, sorry. We want to move the boundary box over to the right. Like I said, we'll use our X position and we will add the target's horizontal movement. Now, if we want to move it to the left, well, we'll just say else if the target dot X position is less than B box left, then we are going to add the horizontal movement. Now, this may seem a little bit weird. We're adding it on both. And the reason we're adding it on both is because if I press the left, or sorry, the right key, my horizontal movement is going to be positive. If I press my left key, my horizontal movement will be negative. So if I add a negative value to a positive value, we're basically subtracting. So if we add um, five plus negative five, we're going to get zero. And the reason we're using the negative number here is when I go into my character, I'm checking the horizontal input of my keyboard D and A. So if I press the letter A, the horizontal input is going to be negative one, and that will just carry through to the horizontal movement. The horizontal input negative one, horizontal movement will become negative. So what does that mean? If I hit F5, and I press my D key, my character is moving here to the right. And once I get beyond the right hand side, you can see the camera is now moving. If I go to the left, once I get beyond the left hand side, you can see that my camera is moving. So the only thing I need to do is do the top and bottom. Luckily for us, if we open up the camera boundary, it's a simple another if statement. We could say if, our target dot Y position is bigger than the B box bottom. Now remember game maker is flipped. Then what do we want to do? We just want to take the Y position and add our target dot vertical, uh, vertical movement. And we can say else if our target dot Y is less than our B box top. Well, just like before, because we have negative, number, negative numbers, we'll add the Y position in there. So if I hit F5, what we should have is a nice purple boundary box that we can move around in. And then once we go outside that box, you can see our character is actually moving the camera. Now, why do we have this box here? Why did we do it in a separate object? Well, that's simply because now I can see what my camera is going to be doing. So in here, if I found that boundary box to be too big, I don't want to select them both, I'll just select the box. If I bring this in and make sure it's not rotated, I know now that my character can move a lot left and right and only a little bit up and down. So we don't have that massive freedom, but you can see that the camera still works. So this will give us a clear indication on how our camera is going to move. Obviously we don't want this purple box in here, so we can do one of two things. We can either bring the object up and we can make sure we untick visible. However, if you forget to do that, you can always add a draw event. And as long as this draw event is empty, Game Maker will skip the actual draw event for this object and we won't draw the sprite. Even though the sprite isn't there, you can see that when I move to the left and I move to the right, our camera is doing what it should. So now we have a boundary box, so I'd be able to do stuff. And then once my character gets beyond that boundary box, he's going to move the camera itself. So hopefully a simple tutorial. I'll show the code once again. And of course, we could amalgamate some of these if statements because we're using the same thing. We're adding X and it didn't matter if our X position was beyond or less. So we could take this away and we can say if the X position is bigger than B box right or the X position is less than B box left. And we could do the same with this guy. So let's cut this and let's clean up our code a little bit. And if I hit F5, so we're just doing this or this and you can see that even though our purple squares in there, you can see that we have the camera and we have this bounded box, this hidden box here, but if we move up and down and we go past it, our camera's still working and we've cleaned up our code a little bit. If you liked it the other way, you thought it was more uh, easy to read, then totally keep it, it doesn't really matter in the end. However, that's our entire code for our bounding box. Thanks for watching. Hi hey everyone, I'd like to thank you for watching. A special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Kylie, Victor, Manuel, Edward, Annie, Launchby, Paul, Ville, Jujube84, and Jesus.
For the video game, I have chosen my little neighbor. I know it was free on Epic a couple months ago. However, it's a extremely fun game and definitely worth the play. You can find the link to the game in the video here. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.